Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos. Trade deadline special. Alex and Jason back again. Uh, trade deadline is tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. So we are going to cover all of your should be last minute trade targets. Um, yeah, that's right. Alex, uh, I'll let you start off first today. I'm not even going to check in. I don't really care how oh. you're doing. No, uh, uh-uh. nope. Okay. Well, well, uh, I'm sorry. If, well, even if your trade deadline about your has hat. passed, which, which, so, so some deadlines have passed and trust me, there'll still be some stuff in here for you. Um, we, we updated our, our rankings on our website at www.thefantasyfootballsackos.com. Um, so we, uh, we have the rest of schedule rankings. We have, uh, the rankings for the playoffs, um, updated through last week. Um, so go there, check it out. Um, and, uh, sorry for all you Dalvin cook owners, but it's going to get rough. So if you, uh, if you have not. Uh, past your trade deadline yet? Dalvin Cook, trade him for literally anybody. Somebody is going to be better than him. Um, you know, to get one of those top running backs. But we'll, we'll get or Derrick Henry. Th- those would be the two guys that I would just straight up one for one trade. Um, yeah, a question mark, but I, I get it. Um, so I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, I, I am wearing my old school Cubs hat tonight uh, in honor of the greatest uh, baseball president of all time and Theo Epstein, uh, who won the Cubs World Series in 2016, which I thought was never going to happen of all time. And then this is this is dropping. Yeah. Yeah. He's like the greatest. He's the greatest front office baseball person in the history of baseball. He won in he won in Boston. He won in Chicago. It's not even close. Huh. Um, so yeah, you can yeah you can argue with me all all you want on that one, uh, and then also this is dropping on November nineteenth, um, and that's my anniversary. So I get to celebrate oh. four years of wedding wedding bliss. Um, Man, so just uh, shout out to, shout out to my wife for putting up with me for four years, <laughs> and uh, letting me do a podcast and talking to the hundreds and hundreds of sackheads out there. Um, that are are the faithful listeners. So, fellow sack daddies, sack daddies, and sack dudettes. Maybe. Yeah, no? we love every one of them. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. Thank you, Theo Epstein, for everything you did for the Cubs. Now let's move over to football, shall uh, we? Let's do it. All right, so we are talking uh, last minute waiver wire targets or trade targets rather for uh, to help you go all the way this year to the fantasy football championship. Alex, why don't you start it off? Tell me, tell me who your favorite trade target is at the deadline. Uh, yeah, I mean. It's got to be Derrick Henry, who easily has the best schedule uh, for any running backs. And we covered this a couple weeks ago when we did this. Uh, Jacksonville, Detroit, Green Bay, the last three just porous offenses. Um, Again, I would trade anybody one for one um, to get Derrick Henry. Uh, I would trade Kamara. I would trade Aaron Jones. I would trade Delvin Cook. I, I would literally trade anybody one for one to get him. I know he does have a, a little rough uh, the next couple of weeks with Baltimore and Indy, but I mean, he just faced Indy last week and had 100 yards. Um, Baltimore, all of a sudden, they didn't look quite so good. They got trounced by the Patriots this past week, which was surprising. Um, so Derrick Henry is by far and away going to be, you know, we, he did the same exact thing last year, right? Didn't he have like 200 yards, like back to back weeks in the in the fantasy playoffs last year? Um, and I would not be surprised to see him do it again this year. He's by far and away the, the number one um, guy I would go after. Yeah, the, uh, the the next two weeks and last week wasn't particularly friendly to him. And so maybe you can get him at a smidge of a discount. Like as in in a lot of people's leagues, you know, 
the manager of Derrick Henry is looking at the same playoff schedule that you're looking at. But I mean, he put yeah. up six and a half points against Chicago last or two weeks ago, and then eleven this past week has Baltimore and Indy on the road back to back. So maybe instead of the door being slammed shut, maybe there's a, you know, it's cracked a little bit wide open. So maybe you can get in there. Maybe you have to do a two for one trade unless you have Dalvin or I don't know, Kamara or anybody really that's, you know, up there with him. Um, Derek Henry battling for the Derek Henry battling for the league rushing yard title with Dalvin Cook. Uh, Dalvin currently has eight more yards than him. But as you said, Derek Henry has the easiest playoff schedule in the league. Dalvin has the hardest. So, yeah, if I'm the Dalvin manager, I would absolutely try to flip him. But I don't know. And keep in mind, you know, the. This is where during the season that Derrick Henry kind of takes off to or has historically. If you look at what he did last year, he only had one 100 yard rushing game before week 10. And this is how he finished starting in week 10, 188, 159, 149, 103, 86 and 211. Like this, this is where the defenses are starting to get a little more tired and he is just a freak of nature and we'll just bowl people over. So uh, he's by far and away going to be the number one running back the rest of the way. I, I don't even think it's going to be close. I love it. Uh, so yeah, trade for Derrick Henry. If you can, if you can't, my number two running back trade target would be Aaron Jones, who has the second easiest playoff schedule at Detroit, Carolina at home, Tennessee at home. Um, I mean, their average ranking against running backs is almost 29. So they're those three teams are, you know, bottom of the league against running backs the same way that Derrick Henry is going against bottom of the league uh, defenses against running backs as well. Uh, Aaron Jones is running back eight in total points and half PPR. However, he's all the way up at running back four in average points per game. Uh, with more than 18 fantasy points per game. I mean, the guy's a stud. Uh, They've been using him a little bit interesting lately because he's been dealing with some injuries. Um, Ideally, you know, they're just trying to give him a a game or two to become reacclimated and come back. And hopefully he gets that full workload uh, in the fantasy playoffs. But either way, I think even, even with 15 to 20 touches instead of 20 to 25, I still feel like he is a surefire RB1, especially in these matchups. So, Yeah, he's, he's a guy, though, and speaking from experience with, with him being on my team, you know, he had the 140-point week where he had three touchdowns against Detroit in Week 2. Oh, and by the way, he gets to play that same Detroit team the first week of the fantasy playoffs in Week 14, which is just wonderful. Um, but, I mean, other than that, you know, he hasn't had a week under 10, and he also hasn't had a week over 20 um you know and that was one outlier otherwise he hasn't been over 16 so he's been super consistent you're just kind of waiting for that blow up which hopefully is probably coming in the fantasy playoffs um and if if you're looking for somebody to potentially add i i think jamal williams is somebody that should be added in most leagues especially if you have aaron jones on the off chance that he were to get hurt again Um, Keep in mind when Aaron Jones was not playing uh, at half PPR, Jamal Williams had um, weeks of 19.4 and 15.2. So essentially did exactly what Aaron Jones was doing um, other than the one week that or the yeah, other than the one week explosion. Um, So Jamal Williams should be rostered in more than 54 percent of leagues, in my opinion. And plus, he had 11 touches last week. I think he's going to be more than usable Um, or, you know, like maybe not more than usable. But especially if Aaron Jones gets hurt, um, you know, he's somebody that might be available that you should stash just in case um, because he he could go off if Aaron Jones gets hurt. So I I actually look at him as being, um, you know, in that top three of of handcuffs besides Alexander Madison, um, besides um, Latavius Murray for New Orleans. I think Jamal Williams is probably the, you know, in that conversation for being the top handcuff that needs to be rostered. I like it. Um, For anybody with a 
an IR slot because this guy doesn't even have to cost you a roster spot. But we just got done talking about how Derrick Henry is absolutely going, absolutely going to ruin and run over the last three weeks of the fantasy football season and carry you to a championship. If he gets hurt in the process, his backup, Derrinton Evans, who's a, you know, everybody was looking forward to him potentially having a role this year, uh, did get hurt and is on IR. He is practicing. He practiced today. Um, you know, so his hamstring injury is getting better. If something happens to Derrick Henry, maybe Derrinton Evans is the guy that you want. I've stashed him in a couple leagues just because he's free and your IR slot. Um, and I am basically failing miserably at trading for Derrick Henry. So hopefully um, I can get that done. And if I can't, then if he gets injured, I have Derrinton Evans as a backup. So there you go. Um, I suck at fantasy football because I was I was literally looking around rosters to uh, update the rankings uh, off of ESPN. ESPN is far superior to Yahoo, in, in my opinion. Um, but I, I was looking around at rosters and I saw that you had Jorinton Evans in your IR slot. And I literally had no idea who he was. And I could not <laughs> believe that he was rostered in 1.9% of leagues. I was just like, I was like, who the hell is Jorinton Evans? Um, so there's a name. He's on IR. He's free. If you have an IR slot, there's, he's not even going to take up a roster slot on your bench. He's there. He's the backup to Derrick Henry. If he gets hurt and take advantage of that same playoff schedule. So there, I mean, that's the, there you go. I don't need a whole lot more than that to add somebody. Wow. There you go. The deep, deep. So no, it, it, it's impressive. <sighs> All right. Um, my next running back ad or target rather is DeAndre Swift. Uh, DeAndre Swift of the Lions saw a 73% snap share in week 10. Double digit, touch it, double digit touches now in back to back weeks. Uh, he had five catches last week for 68 yards and a score. And he has a top 10 easiest playoff schedule at number seven against Green Bay at home at Tennessee and Tampa at home. Tampa obviously is the one that's not great and it's kind of sucks. It's on championship week. However, Green Bay and Tennessee, the first two weeks, man, that has to appeal. So I would. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that, really. No. And he's taking over that offense and he looks freaking phenomenal. Um, I would be trying to trade yeah. for DeAndre Swift. I think that he's, you know, it's the second half of the season. It's it's rookie time, basically, right? So they're they're trying to give rookies some more time. I just hope that Matt Stafford is remains healthy enough to play, even though he has a fracture in his thumb, because I just worry about that offense moving the ball at all um, without him. So, uh, do you like DeAndre? Yeah, I mean, he's had three plus catches in every game except for one. Um, so the floor is going to be there. Um, True. And, and the matchups are just so good. Adrian Peterson's been phased out. Karrion Johnson hasn't really done anything. And it's, hey, we, we told you before the season, never draft a Detroit Lions running back. Um, hopefully you were able to grab him um, because because that playoff schedule is really good, like Jason was talking about. Um and I, I think you're going to be really hard pressed to trade for him because he's been really good the last couple weeks, um, especially against Washington, which is a somewhat of a difficult matchup. And, um, you know, having having a touchdown and uh, 23 points in half PPR is is definitely impressive. Um, so I, I think you're going to be hard pressed to, to pry him out of somebody's hands. I mean, he's running back 14 on the year. And if you think about it, like if he would have caught that you know, 20 yard touchdown pass against Chicago. Like how different would his season have been? How different would the Lions season overall have been? Um, if if he didn't drop that pass in the end zone week one, he'd, you know, you're looking at borderline a top 10 back. Um, and he probably would have gotten the coach's trust a little bit earlier in the season. So um, yeah, he he's for sure uh, somebody that, that you want to be going after, but I, I think it's going to be a tough go to get him. Rest of season, DeAndre Swift or Zeke? Uh, 
Um, I think the answer is Zeke. Um, yeah. Even though they have a really tough playoff schedule, since you know Cincinnati's easy week fourteen, but then San Francisco and Philly week fifteen and sixteen, um, I, I do I am a, a Zeke Elliott um, fan because I think those catches are going to be there for him more than they are for even Swift. You know um, when uh, um, Andy Dalton came in the very next week against Arizona, he had eight catches. So I, you know, Andy's going to throw and he's going to check down, um, you know, the last couple of weeks with Ben DiNucci and whoever the other guy was against the Steelers. Um, Gilbert, you know, he, he only had one or two catches, but he, I mean, even against two pretty good rushing defenses in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, you know, he still had eight points, which is probably about what you were expecting out of him. Um, he's going to have the touches. I think I would rather have Zeke. Um, than DeAndre Swift. It's close though, but I, I think I'd rather have Zeke because I, I think he's going to produce with Andy Dalton back under center. And they're also getting some offensive linemen back and a lot of people don't even talk about that. They just talk about Zeke's week-to-week production, yeah. but they don't talk about how like they're routinely adding back healthier linemen. And so hopefully that continues. Um, and yeah, I, I think I agree with you. I was hoping you'd say the DeAndre Swift side, but Alas, you did not take the bait. Um, do you have any running Sorry. back? What are some fringe guys? Are there any fringe guys you like at running back? So <laughs> I I know that I ripped on Cam Akers uh, as being just poop uh, in our last podcast. And if you as haven't part checked of our out, poop to waivers. Me Jason nearly died. Our poop poop waivers. Um, but I mean, the like the Cam Akers um, of the world makes sense because, you know, the Rams have what the sixth easiest playoff schedule, seventh easiest playoff schedule, um, sixth actually. Or, um, so like somebody like that where, hey, there's a rookie, maybe they'll give him some run down the stretch. Um, maybe he's an injury away from having some value. Um, somebody like that. Um, I, I hate to say J.K. Dobbins name. Um, or Mark Ingram. Um, like you don't really want to go down those road, but they had, they do have favorable matchups. Um, Naheem Hines, who we've talked about, I think is going to go off for the next month based on their based on their schedule. I really um, do too. JD McKissick, who we've ad nauseum, yeah, ad, ad nauseum. We've talked about JD McKissick um, over the last couple weeks here with all the receptions he has, especially with Alex Smith. Uh, I think he's going to be good. And then, um, you know, this is kind of a weird one, but I, I think that Brian Hill is somebody that could have value. Um, Zeke's only on a one year contract. Um, he looks slow and Brian Hill looks considerably more electric than he does. Um, the last two weeks before their buy, he had 11 carries and eight carries. Um, so it's not like he's not touching the ball now. Um, and if, if Gurley gets hurt or if he wants to shut it down and fake an injury so that he can get his next contract next year, which wouldn't be overly surprising, um, I could see somebody like Brian Hill um, having some sort of playoff value, especially if Gurley gets hurt. Um, you know, he's only rostered in 5% of leagues, um, but that's somebody that um, if he got rostered, um, I could almost justify it. I like all of those. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree with you. I think Naheem Hines is just going to have a crazy finish to the season and some plus matchups. They're just not. I hope trying, he does. They're not trying to force it anymore to Jonathan Taylor, and they're just using Naheem Hines as that pass down, passing down uh, running back, and he's doing a great job with it. J.D. McKissick, the snap share split between... Uh, the snap share split between uh, Washington running backs is phenomenal. JD McKissick was in on 70% of snaps last week. Antonio Gibson only played 38. 38. JD McKissick almost played twice as many snaps as Antonio Gibson wow. last week. So, like, 
Antonio Gibson is very much the early down back, and sometimes they um, are both on the field together. J.D. McKissick has been split out wide in those things. But J.D. McKissick he, is going to have, like, almost 10 targets a game. It's going to be, like... So, I would yeah. have no problem starting McKissick or Hines. And, and Gibson's been productive when they give him the ball, but McKissick is just better. Yeah. Um... That is going to do it for our running back ads. Shall we talk about some uh, receivers? Let's start with. Yes, please. Uh, numero uno. You can't get. I don't think you can get him. If you can get him, then you just are in. I don't even know. I want to be in your fantasy league. If you can trade for Devonte Adams, because he's averaging the most fantasy points per game in the league at almost 27. It's more than seven fantasy points per game than the next best receiver because he's crazy. Uh, Last year, Michael Thomas, last year, Michael Thomas only averaged 23 and a half fantasy points per game. Um, So he's, he's doing better than that by more than three points a game. He was our preseason number one wide receiver. We couldn't have been more right about Devante. Um, It was crazy. It's great seeing the Packers open up that offense. Uh, I think the guy is matchup proof, regardless of what the playoff matchups are. Um, so I just I would be doing everything I could to try to get Devonte. Uh, I know in our league, there the the Devonte manager is absolutely unwilling to trade him. So it just is what it is. But I mean, even their schedule. I don't blame him. Even their schedule isn't really that bad. It's kind of middle of the road um, for the playoffs uh, against Detroit, Carolina, and Tennessee. But it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I just if you can get Devonte, get him. It's crazy. He's so good. Yeah, I think I think Adams is literally flex option one during the playoffs, and I think Derrick Henry is number two. Um, and, I, and then I think there's a line there. So like I'd if you can, them, if you can get either one of those two. Oh, you really? OK, I would take Henry um, first. Yeah, it, it's possible. But I mean, OK. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Adams is just so good. Um, so absolutely. I, I do have a question for you because um, I, I, Cincinnati has the, the basically the second easiest or they're tied for the second easiest schedule. Um, for wide receivers, uh, you've been talking up T Higgins all year. Uh, I know you love him. Um, are, are you putting him and Tyler Boyd like right next to each other? Do you put Higgins above Boyd in as far as value goes? Uh, well, I can tell you that T Higgins has outscored Tyler Boyd since starting in week three. Um, so as far as I rank them on a week to week basis, like I would, <laughs> you hate ranking T Higgins over Tyler Boyd, but if he's out producing him, he's out producing him. So I would probably only put him a couple spots. Yeah, ahead. the numbers are numbers don't lie. I would probably yeah. put him a couple spots ahead of, um, of Tyler Boyd. I guess here we can we can talk about this week's rankings, which are. Also available on our website, the fantasyfootballsackos.com. I have T. Higgins ranked as my 14th wide receiver, and I have Tyler Boyd at 24. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they've just both like, you know, it, and maybe it speaks more to Joe Burrow um, the last couple of weeks here dallas pittsburgh and houston uh, burrow's getting the living crap kicked out of him every game it seems like um he's got washington this week which will not be easy uh week 15 he's got pittsburgh like if he can make it through the entire season without getting injured um he's basically iron man at this point um and i would say like he's he like him getting injured seems inevitable but it like he has not gotten hurt yet. And so the fact that he hasn't is just crazy to me. But it, like Joe Burrow, it, AJ Green sucks, um, which is just too bad. And, and it's become the Tyler Higgins and 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 Tyler Boyd show. And I, I think either one of them, um, you know, I, I think one of the two on a given week are going to be top 10 
probably in general going forward. Trying to figure out which one is probably probably depends on what the you know the cornerback matchup. Uh, it would seem that Tyler Boyd's probably getting matched up with a better corner, which is leaving it open for T. Higgins. I would be interested to see if that switches or switched at some point. Um, almost like a Chase Claypool type situation where teams are putting their number one corner on Chase Claypool and it's opening things up for Deontay Johnson um, to, to be productive. And I, I know that you like Johnson more than you like Claypool the rest of the way, um, even though it seems like Claypool is probably the more um, talented of the two or pure talents of the two wide receivers there. Um, it, you know, a lot of this is just going to depend on, on cornerback matchups uh, to some certain degree. Yeah. Back to T Higgins. He is wide receiver 11 since week three, averaging more than 14 fantasy points per Damn. game. Wide receiver 11. And we like we talked about him in our waiver shows at the beginning of the season. We talked about T Higgins, I think, for like three or four waiver shows in a row because he was still available yeah. in more than 50 percent of leagues. And like the biggest things with rookies, regardless of, you know, receiver this receiver that about taking two years to get in the league or to you know to start to excel the biggest thing they need is an opportunity and they did put t higgins in and they got his toes wet week two and then dumped him into the deep end in week three and since then wide receiver 11 so he has the opportunity joe burrow loves throwing to him i he's going to be crazy next year especially if they get rid of uh aj green i mean i have i think he should be drafted in the top four rounds. Pro like, would you draft like you would, where would you draft G Higgins next year? What round? Uh, if he's going to be wide receiver 11, then yeah, round four is probably about right. Um, it, I, I think it just sucks that we started a fantasy football podcast when I am a, one of the biggest believers in don't ever draft a rookie wide receiver. And there's They've like a historic up. class of rookie wide receivers and they're all good. Um, and so, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, as we start prepping for next year a little bit, where, where some of these guys go. Um, I, I do want to talk about a little bit about people that um, I would trade away from a wide receiver standpoint. Uh, Atlanta's oh. schedule is really tough. The last the last three weeks um, with the Chargers, Tampa Bay and Kansas City, um, those those teams average uh, being better than the seventh stingiest defense against wide receiver points. Um, so what are you doing with Julio? What, what are you doing with Ridley? Um, I mean, would you dare trade one of them to get a T Higgins on your roster? That just sounds insane, right? That is insane. And so what I would do is I try to do a two for one. So if I have those guys, because nobody is, I mean, your league would like boycott if you traded Julio for T Higgins one for one. And so what I would do is. I would find somebody that had like maybe that guy that has T Higgins also has Justin Herbert and I am deficient at quarterback. So I would try to do the two for one combo and then put Julio in it. And then after I make the trade, I'd be like, Oh, Hey, by the way, uh, the Falcons on average play the seventh best uh, defense against receivers over the course of the fantasy playoffs. And Calvin Ridley is also becoming healthy enough to come back. So good luck with Julio buddy. Like, see you later. Um. Right. Uh, I. I don't know. Trading for T. Higgins would be hard. The uh, with the Julio as as the for instance, but it's doable. Um. If you want consistency, maybe go T. Higgins. But if you want ceiling, like Claypool and Jefferson, probably have higher ceilings as rookies. But. Mm hmm. Man. Yeah, I agree, and I. Yeah. Um, one thing I guess I guess I just realized is Seattle's playing Arizona this week. I need to move Tyler Lockett up to the number one wide receiver based on the last time they played with Patrick Peterson shadowing DK Metcalf. <laughs> As I'm looking at schedule, it's like, oh, shit, uh, Lockett's going to be really good again this week. Um, yeah, I mean, so it, Seattle's got a tough matchup, too, but I'm you can't really trade uh, DK Metcalf. I would be more inclined to trade Tyler Lockett and hope, you know, he's been wildly inconsistent. Uh, obviously, he had that giant blow up game. Um, you know, this this time of year, um, if you are still able to make trades, um, you know, as inconsistent as everybody's been, uh, I always err on the take the consistent players uh, and hope that they blow up 
for a given week. Um, I would rather guarantee myself points in playoff matchups. And if the other person goes off and you lose, then that's fine. Um, but you hope that they have down weeks and it's all about matchups. Again, go to our website, fantasyfootballsackers.com. Check, check out these rankings um, for the end of the year to figure out who to target. Even though we're highlighting some of them, there's a lot more to look at. Yeah, we break down both uh, rest of season, strength of schedule, by position, by team, and playoff strength of schedule um, by position, by team. For So uh, we got it all there. It's sortable. It's beautiful. And uh, yeah, so um, let's talk about a different wide receiver. I like the stay away from aspect of it. Um, I mean, guys with really unfavorable playoff schedule that are going to be you know, heavily used Justin Jefferson uh, and Adam Thielen are facing on average the number nine overall uh, defense against receivers in the playoff. Um, Houston has a bad playoff schedule. It's not going to be easy for DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, especially if Teddy Bridgewater's hurt, although he is looks like he's on the right side of questionable for now. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of guys that are going to have some rough goes or potential, you know, trap games or chances for letdowns in the playoffs. And if you can trade out of that into somebody with a favorable schedule that you think is just as well, I would pull the trigger on it. Uh, one stay away that I have, even though he has a fantastic schedule is uh, Marquise Brown, who I actually dropped this week. I would, <laughs> I would drop him. I would trade him for a handshake. I would trade him for a high five. <laughs> I would drop Marquise Brown uh, for anything, really. Uh, just no value there. I don't care about his rest of season schedule. I don't care about how, you know, Lamar is going to be passing more and have more opportunities to pass against worse defenses. I don't care because if he passes, it's not going to be to Marquise Brown. It's going to be to Willie Sneed. So there you go. Or Mark and Andrews. Or, yeah, or anybody other than Marquise Brown. So, and if he does, it's going to be a football field away because that's how Lamar's passes look this year. So, damn. <clears throat> couldn't fall out of a boat and hit water. I tell you what, man, that guy is just incredibly terrible at deep ball accuracy this season. So, yeah, we were both hoping a lot more from Marquise Brown, and obviously that hasn't happened. Um, if, if I can pivot to defenses just real quick, oh, um, Lord. Some, something to be aware of, um, just from like a, a random waiver ad spot uh, in our league, um, somebody actually dropped the Colts defense um, this week. Um, they're rostered in over 90 percent of leagues, but they're facing Green Bay this week. And apparently somebody thought that, um, you know. They, they could drop the Indian the Indianapolis Colts defense. Um, so just be aware of defensive drops. Um, so this week, the Bears are on a bye. Um, they, their playoff schedule is Houston, Minnesota, Jacksonville, which is pretty good. Um, they're only available in 30% of leagues. Um, but, you know, a lot of people drop bye week defenses. Um, so hop, hop on the bears if they're available. If somebody drops the Colts, hop on them with the Packers this week and just create a roster spot for the stretch run. Um, San Francisco's on a bye this week. Um, so maybe they might get dropped. They end up with Washington, Dallas and Arizona. So at least you can play them two out of three weeks. Um, just, so th that would just be my, my tip is just look at defensive matchups, try to find the jets. Um, you know, try to find the bears, um, try, you know, just, just keep your eyes out for it. Um, those defenses can win you titles. Um, and then also just, and I know you hate kickers, but just looking at the, the teams that move the ball a lot that, that have tough, tough matchups. So let's talk about Seattle's kicker, right? I mean, uh, Myers just made like a 59 yard field goal this week where they might have a tough matchup with like, so obviously week 14 is easy against the Jets, but then Washington and the Rams. In, so in those situations where they might be facing good passing defenses, I actually look at that as opportunities for kickers. So you're looking at, at Meyer, you're looking at Youngway Koo uh, for Atlanta, 
where they're going to move the ball to a certain extent. They're probably not going to score touchdowns, but they're probably going to kick field goals. So just be aware of that. Um, I got, I got nothing to add to kickers other than they shouldn't be in your league. If they're in your league, then you should talk to your league manager about getting them removed because kickers score more points. A lot of times like what will Lutz is averaging 10 points a week, which is a hundred yard rushing game. And like, there's nobody rushing for a hundred yards right now. And so I just, I hate kickers. I think that they score way too many points. I think that bonuses for extra long field goals are even worse. And I just <laughs> don't think that they belong in fantasy football. So that's that's my uh wow. that's my stump speech on field goal kickers scoring more than I don't even know. I you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. The shell cross sorrows here. No, I'm gonna do an analysis about how overpowered and stupid kickers are and it's going to happen not this week because I'm challenging myself to do it now about why kickers should not be in fantasy football I might even do a write up on it because I feel so strongly about it but here we are so (sighs) and like I I understand your complaints but when the top like 10 kickers are all within 10 points of each other. Um, it, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I mean, it does. If you have, if your kicker has the down week and you go up against somebody else that scores 20 points as a kicker, like how the hell is a kicker out here scoring yeah. 20 points? They're a kicker. Yeah. The top 15 kick, the top 15 kickers are all within 15 points of each other. So like, get over it. The get over it. Yeah, that's what I said. Wow. You're just you're just upset that you lost me by less than a point because your kicker didn't kick a field goal when they took a kneel down. No, I'm upset Jason it's Sanders okay. scored 22 points in a game. I'm upset that Tyler Bass well, deserve that. scored 23 points in a game. I'm upset that Suck yeah, he Up kicked, kicked s- long field goals. scored 17 points in, in a game. I'm s- upset that Daniel Carson Scored 15 points in a game. I'm upset that Young Ho Koo it's a great week. scored 20 Young points. Way. Young, It's Ho! H-O-E! <laughs> it's Young Way Koo. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, Lutz has put up 15 <laughs> in a game. Graham Gano, 20 in a game. Brandon McManus, 24 so, sorry, points. Sorry to interrupt. 24 sorry damn to interrupt points! Your, your kicking stuff. I, I, uh, you started this. I sent an email at work today. I, I sent an email at work today to say Coolio to somebody. And so I went on Google to look at pictures of Coolio. So I was just, I would just send a picture of Coolio. Um, if, if you're, if you can, um, on your phone or wherever you are, just go look up a picture of what Coolio looks like right now. Um, he, he used to have like these dreads that would like stick out. And now he's like bald, but he still has like two dread spots like on the side of his head that stick out, but he's bald down the middle. So um, like if if you look, if you're looking for some entertainment, like just go type in Coolio to Google and and take a look at what his (laughs) take a look at what his hair looks like. Holy shit. He has a (laughs) tattoo down the middle. (laughs) Oh, Oh my God. Yeah, it looks like it's like a sword or some shit right down the middle of the top of his fucking head. Like a Brock Lesnar tat that he has down his chest. It's just yes, on his head. But it's down the middle of his fucking... I, and, it's not, and it ends where at his forehead. And then he has gray braids on either side of it. This is amazing. (laughs) 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 Holy shit. How did nobody ever tell me about this? Holy crap. I didn't realize. I didn't realize that was a tat when I was looking earlier. I thought it was just like some remnant hair that he didn't shave off properly. Oh, that's a Um, fucking tat. This is amazing. Yeah. Wow. We yeah. are all right. I mean, he's been spending most of his life living in a gangster paradise, but that is not 
what you're looking for. We got off track with kickers, and then we got way off track. <laughs> We're gonna bring it, bring it back a little bit. It's a smidge. Yeah, but but just just go look at what Coolio looks like. It's fantastic. All right. Speech speaking about bitch and haircuts. Can we talk about Justin Herbert and his new haircut? Because <laughs> I'm telling you what, oh, man, yeah. that guy, that guy is just amazing. He is just swimming in women with that Jay freaking cool. haircut, man. Oh my god. Um and Bert. speak it. Yeah, oh yeah. And he's by the way, he's also one of my trade targets. So let's talk about it. Oh. Un- under pressure. How's that for a segue? Or not a segue. Do, 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 but do. A, a, a segue. <clears throat> under pressure coup. this season. Yeah, segue coup. Under pressure this season, Justin <laughs> Herbert has thrown seven touchdowns, two picks, has a 101 and a half passer rating, which is first in the league. Passing yards under pressure. Ooh, uno. There, there are three, only three quarterbacks with more passing yards under pressure than Justin Herbert. Those are Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, and Russell Wilson. Um, he is second in 30 yard, 30 plus yard completions behind Russell Wilson. He has the most touchdown passes of 20 or more yards downfield through 10 games by a rookie QB Mm. in history, in history with nine, Russell Wilson has eight Watson had seven. He has the second easiest rest of season schedule for a quarterback, and he has the easiest playoff schedule of Atlanta, Las Vegas, and Denver. I want Justin Herbert on my team this year. I want him on my team next year. I want him on my team every year. Uh, He's going to be a free keeper for a lot of people in keeper leagues. I would pay whatever you have to pay. If you need to pay um, um, uh, monies to hold on to him uh, in auction leagues, if you're in an auction keeper, he's going to be a dynasty stud. I mean, the guy is incredible. So I would absolutely hold on or trade for Justin Herbert here as we come up to the trade deadline. I offered Cam Newton and Robert Woods for Justin Herbert today. And that manager turned it down in a hurry for Justin Herbert. So ouch. Do you like Herbie? Sorry. Oh yeah. Everybody loves Herbie. Uh, Lindsay Lohan. Those were, those were like her glory days when she was in that movie, right? Wasn't she in like a Herbert movie or or Herbie Herbie movie? I can't. Um, I, I, what? Am I wrong? Are you trying to make us sound old? <laughs> <laughs> I I never said I was young. Also, I have a ton of white hair coming in right here. Uh, um, so have that to look forward to. Yeah, really, really like Herbert the rest of the way, obviously, as you mentioned. Um, if Mike Williams is available, um, he, he is available in 35% of leagues. Um, he because of all those downfield throws. Um, you know, it's possible that he gets in the end zone a couple of times, uh, last three weeks, Atlanta, Vegas, and Denver. Um, those are, those are pretty solid matchups, um, for both, uh, Herbie and the, the wide receiver core there. Uh, I know that you, uh, trade for Keenan Allen earlier this year. Um, I think you're going to love what he ends up doing, uh, the last couple of weeks here, uh, Hunter Henry, you know, somebody who's, uh, I think he's a fringe, Fringe number one tight end. I think he's 11th this year so far. Um, I would expect him to see him have some success in the playoffs too. And we've talked about there being a definite fallout. If you don't have Kelsey, you don't really have a tight end. Uh, I think Hunter Henry probably ends up in the top five the last three weeks um, because there's just not a whole heck of a lot of options to pick from um, at the end of the year. I'm going to piggyback onto your Keenan Allen mentioned there. Um, Keenan Allen has played in eight games healthy as a 16 week season. His eight healthy games, if projected forward would amount to 182 targets, 126 catches, 
more than 1,300 yards and eight scores. Three off the pace. Solid. Three off the pace of Michael Thomas's 185 last year. And that has a the tie rod game week one in there too. So Yep. Like so I was gonna say. Uh, it could be better. Could be better. So Keenan Allen is a surefire stud with frickin' Herbert. Like wide receiver one, probably I mean he's a top five, top border definite top ten receiver potentially top five next season in drafts so yeah i just i can't get enough what what a resurrection for him after being down so far down on him with tyrod yeah and then what what a a collapsed along could do for a fantasy football wide receiver is pretty unbelievable i told you i as we said in our in a previous podcast that freaking health personnel he took it on upon himself to do what he thought was best for the team and just took the air out of Tyrod's lung and put it right into that offense right into that offense just injected it and <laughs> yeah pumped him up um I, I I did talk about tight ends previously um the the number one trade target for tight ends for me is Noah Fant um they have the easiest playoff schedule um, and he's got the targets, um, but he has not had the success that he did the first two weeks. Uh, I know he hurt his ankle and he missed a couple of games or he missed, he only missed one game, but he has not had a healthy game. It seems like every game he ends up in the blue tent for something or limps off the field or um, something happens with him. And I know Drew Locke uh, might miss a week or two here um, with him not being healthy, but um, the targets are there. Um, they have the easiest schedule. Um, so Noah Fant would be the, the tight end that I would go after if he's available. Yeah. I mean, I think the, it's with the understanding that if you, if you can't get Travis Kelsey, because the Kelsey manager doesn't want to get rid of him, that's who you would go for. Um, he did not, nobody should trade Kelsey. No, you shouldn't. Uh, he did not practice today. And by he, I mean, Noah Fant did not practice today. Uh, because of a rib injury, so I don't know if they're just trying to give him the day off to try to get healthy. Um, he really hasn't been healthy for the majority of the season. Um, I just really hope nope. that Denver upgrades quarterback this off season. I just there's so many offensive weapons, and when you get Cortland Sutton back, man. But I don't know. I just I hate. I I really question myself starting anybody that has Drew Locke throwing it to him. Because he really hasn't been good for any part of any game until the fourth quarter when he's just thrown from behind. Right. But, so, yeah, all prevent defenses. It, exactly. Um, but can we, since we did bring up Kelsey, can we talk about how good he's been? He has almost 140 fantasy points, Please? averaging 15 and a half fantasy points per game. Wide receiver six. He was good for wide receiver six. He is the single most advantaged. Like. I think that there's a case. I mean, if you're drafting at the beginning of the first round, you have to take CMC, Camara, Dalvin. I think are probably the top three and maybe Aaron Jones probably in there, too. They're probably like, or sh- probably should be the top four next year. Um, well, if Aaron Jones is a free agent, we don't know where he's going to end up. They have to resign him. They have to. He's so good. But assuming everybody they stay there, Just I would say that those are probably the top four. But like after that, because I mean, Travis Kelsey is not going to go out and put up 30 to 40 points in a week. He's going to be you know, 15 to 20, maybe a 25 point game here and there, which is still crazy. Um, but he's such, he's the single largest advantage at any different, at any position. Um, outside of like those top it three to four for a while. Backs. Yeah. Especially with Kittle getting hurt this year, but Kittle always gets hurt. Yeah. But. All right. Uh, my last receiver target is Jalen Rager, somebody that we've also talked about 
numerously on this podcast. In week 10, Jalen Rager tied Travis Fulgham in snap percentage. We're seeing the takeover happen in front of our eyes. He led the team. He led the Eagles in targets, catches, and yards. Uh, Seven targets, four catches for almost 50. He has the second easiest rest of season schedule and the fourth easiest playoff schedule of New Orleans at Arizona at Dallas. Like the Eagles, somebody, like, it can't continue to be this bad. It can't. Like the the schedule really it could. is it's wide open. It's so it's so wide open though. <laughs> so I just I really think that Jalen Rager could have a nice finish to the year, even if it's only as a wide receiver too. Um, you know, I'm not expecting top 12 or anything, but I think he could be a flex or better uh, as the season finishes out and into the playoffs. I think he's a fine weekly flex play. So yeah. Do you like Rager as well? Yeah. I, th- yeah, I, I agree with all that. I will say that James Bradbury got matched up on Fulgham um, against the Giants uh, last week. Um, so I know Fulgham disappointed with, with the one catch for eight yards. Um, Womp. And I know like. No, yeah, but it's it's one of those things where I just uh, I think Rager going to be fine. I feel bad for Fulgham owners because uh, now you really have to question if you can play him. But. The good news is, is he has Seattle uh, after this week and everybody does well against Seattle. There you go. There you go. Uh, do you have any other fringe ads that you'd like to talk about at receiver? No, I don't think so. Um, I don't think Alshon Jeffrey um, would fall into that even with their easy schedule and his availability. Uh, I would be very surprised if he ends up doing anything. Um, and we've talked about Josh Reynolds the last couple of weeks, um, and just how easy their schedule is down the stretch. Um, keep in mind, they have the jets and Seattle to wrap up the year week 15, 16 and Reynolds has basically had, you know, three straight weeks of double digit targets, um, or close to it. Um, so he, he's somebody that, that I, you know, you got to look at as potentially being, uh, overly serviceable. Um, he talked about Sammy Watkins. I, I don't trust him uh, as far as I could throw him, which would be like zero feet because he's like 230 pounds. Um, <laughs> I, I don't want anything to do with Hollywood Brown. Um, the, the Jets have a relatively easy schedule. Um, so, you know, if Crowder Crowder's not going to be available. Um, so I, you know, there's not a whole lot of like fringe guys that I really want to be adding. Uh, Alan Lazard um, is somebody who, who's going to be back this week that that maybe you take a look at. Um, but otherwise, there's a whole lot of a whole lot of not much. The one guy that I think could have a very strong finish of the season that you can go and pick up is Michael Pittman Jr. Um He's currently only rostered in yeah. like 15% of leagues on ESPN, which is crazy. Uh, if you want to talk snap share, uh, he out snapped T.Y. Hilton 57 to 47, 81% to 67% last week. And it's, it's just the guy's, he's good. Like he's good at football. Um, and if he's going to start getting the snap share as well, he looked good. He met the he eye had, test. He had eight targets and he had a rush that went for more than 20 yards. Like if he's going to be getting that kind of work and he's Philip Rivers, six, six wide receiver, <laughs> seven of eight targets for 101 yards and another 21 yard rush as well. I mean, that's just, it's very, it's very nice. This is very nice. So I, uh, I am absolutely targeting, uh, Michael Pittman Jr. If I can get him. Um, I mean, they have a very non, we've, we've talked about their schedule too. I mean, we talked about earlier with Naheem Hines, like, yeah. So I, I would, 
I would pick up Michael Pittman. I'd say I he, he's not six nine, Jason. He's only six five, so he's not he's not nice, nice, very nice. You just need to calm your calm your uh, expectations a little bit on that. <laughs> We're children. Oh, man. They're ch- children watching this. All right. Um. Well, I do have one piece of newsy stuff. <laughs> oh man. Alex, my newsy stuff for the day today is Hi. Th- is that six additional Raiders defenders were placed on the reserve COVID-19 list today following Cleland Farrell's positive COVID test, including safety Jonathan Abram, defensive tackle Malik Collins, Jonathan Hankins, defensive back Isaiah Johnson, D- defensive end Arden Key, and D tackle Kendall Vickers. So you got seven defensive players, seven defensive players now on the COVID list. So last week for the Raiders, it was the offensive line. And this week it's the defensive line's turn. So they're just having too much fun on the strip. Yeah, not great. Yeah, probably. Um, the The fact that they have to play Kansas City this week um, is probably not a good omen if half your defense is out. They're going to score um, a million. It's actually a really bad omen. Uh, it's probably a little less than that, but you're close. Um, so I don't... Uh, yeah, that's not good. And the Raiders have already been fined a couple times for not following uh, protocols and things like that. But uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So I get it to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, the players will be eligible to play Sunday against the Chiefs so long as they continue to test negatively. However, some will only be eligible on Sunday. So some will not have practiced at all. Oy vey. Yeah, it's the it's, fine. It's, it's the COVID life, man. It's COVID season, but it is more, it is. more time they can spend on the strip. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, with that, we're going to bring it over to our social media page. If you have not already, please do follow us. Follow us on social media. We are at the FF Sackos everywhere: uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I don't even, is there, is there anything else that I missed? I don't think so. Um, check out our weekly rankings. They are live on our website, no, the fantasy football so. com, And we also have our rest of season and strength of schedule stuff up as well. So go check it out. Let us know what you think of it. And uh, yeah, Alex, thank you for being so handsome. Hey, thank you. Uh, love your face. Love your clothes. Love your hair. Um, and love your analysis. Because I like we, we've done, you know, this is our, kind of our first foray. Um, we're week 11 and um, just uh, it's been fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to next year because all my teams suck. Segway coup. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.